Hi guys and welcome to the course. I'm Jay from borntoproduce.com and this is lesson one of 14. This is gonna be just a basic overview of all the sections and modules in Retrolog. In the coming videos, we'll be going into a lot more detail and then we'll also be making a short loop of eight different sounds all made with Retrolog, like the kick, the clap, the hi-hats, the pad, sub bass, bass, arpeggiator, uh, white noise risers, that kind of thing, all made with Retrolog. And then we'll finish up with having a look at some of the presets I made for our brand new BTP1 preset bank. I'll show you exactly how I made them. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So let's just quickly load up Retrolog, obviously add instrument track, which I've already done here. And I'm gonna fire up the initial patch, which it does automatically. Obviously you've got the keyboard down here, which you can use with your mouse. You've got the pitch bend and mod wheels here also in graphical format, so you can use your mouse with these as well. But of course, as you can perhaps see here, I've got a MIDI keyboard yeah, here, and I've got the pitch bend and mod wheel controls here right in front of me. And when we get into the more complex patches, I will be using the mod wheel quite a bit. So at the top, we've got our voices section, which is where you can choose whether you want monophonic or polyphonic and you can choose the polyphony. You've got glide controls, which is portamento, and you've got various voice and trigger modes, which more detail will follow. The top right section is the main section, where you've got your overall octave settings, pitch bends, the overall tuning, and your overall volume. These are the typical controls you expect on a main unit. Now, when I come on to the oscillators next, I will be just skipping over it in this first lesson. But in the next few lessons, I will be delving right into this in a lot of detail, telling you what each oscillator does and all the options that come with it. So as you can see, you've got three oscillators and these obviously drive your sounds and you've got all the various controls to shape those sounds as well. Four waves available, sine wave, triangle wave, saw wave and square wave. Under the type menu, you've got single, sync, cross, XOR and multi. You can also choose what phase these waves are in. So do they want to be free running or with a random phase or with a fixed phase that you can select? Again, we'll come into detail in that in later lessons. The shape control becomes active when you choose a square wave. The course control is for tuning the oscillator with semitones. Fine tuning is for sense. And of course you have your own individual octave control for oscillator one. And don't forget the main octave control is up in the main section. Oscillator two, just click it on here, and it's exactly the same as oscillator one. And the same with oscillator three, and you can blend all these together. And just so you know, multi means you can have up to eight voices per oscillator. And you can also detune those as well, which creates a fat sound. Let's just play something. So you can really hear that it's starting to thicken up that sound. The sub oscillator is a separate and additional oscillator, and it is always set to an octave lower than what is set in your main section. And that can be switched on with this button here. And you can choose any of these three waveforms here. And if you have fixed switched on, it's basically the same as having a fixed phase as in the other oscillators, so naught degree phase. And if you've got it switched off, it runs freely, just like in the other oscillators when you choose free. Again, don't worry, a lot more detail is coming in the next few lessons. This is your oscillator mix section. So we can blend the volumes of the three oscillators and the sub oscillator. There's also a noise generator here, which you can then blend in the volume of that as well here. And you can choose between white noise, pink noise, white bandpass and pink bandpass. So moving on, we've spoke about the oscillator mix section, although we haven't done the ring modulator section. You can switch ring modulation on here. And the volume for this control is here. And you can get some great effects by modulating oscillator one and oscillator two. And you can change down here in the drop menu which oscillators you modulate. And you can get some great effects with ring modulation and I'll be showing you that later. Next, I'd like to go over to the amplifier section. Got your overall volume control for the amplifier here. You've got your pan control here. And you probably know what ADSR is, it's the amp envelope. A is attack, D is decay, S is sustain, and R is release. And it's basically how you shape the sound over time. So 
So the attack of the sound, does it come in straight away? Or is there a bit of a fade in? So you'd have the fade in type sounds for pads, for example, and a quick attack for like leads or bass or something like that. And then it's how long for the sound to decay after the initial hit and sustain and then release after the note has been depressed. And all of these controls can be automated in creative ways. You've got your velocity fader here, and this is going to govern how sensitive your keys on your MIDI keyboard are to how hard they are being pressed. So how soft or hard you hit the keys is dependent on the volume. If you've got it set to 100%, then it's going to affect the velocity quite a lot. And if you've got it set to 0%, it doesn't matter how hard or soft you press the keys, they'll all be the same volume. So moving on to the filter section, you've got a huge array of filters in Retrolog 2. I think there's 24 in total, which is amazing. You've got low passes, band passes, high passes, all passes, and then a combination of the whole lot. You've got resonance controls here and distortion controls, which are all self-explanatory, but you've got a nice array of different distortion types. Really great. And the KF, by the way, stands for key follow. And so therefore rate KF will change the rate reduction depending on where you play it on your keyboard. You've got your cutoff frequency dial, which is used a lot in dance music for opening up the sound over time. And so here you're setting at what point the sounds start coming through the filter, i.e. the threshold. The envelope dialed is important. It's basically how much you want the envelope here to affect your sound. So this works similarly to the amplifier envelope. You've got attack, decay, sustain and release again. You've also got a velocity fader here as well. So moving on to the modulation section. This is a creative section for when you want to start getting more funky, more advanced. You've got four different LFOs and an envelope tab. Three and four are polyphonic. And you've got six different waveforms here to shape your modulation. And you can assign these LFOs to your oscillators, for example, to change the pitch over time and, and create all sorts of crazy effects. You can change the frequency here. And you get some options down below. And on LFOs 3 and 4, you get some fading options as well. Which is nice when you want to create a long, drawn-out sound with a bit of vibrato at the end, but not at the start. And the modulation matrix is basically where all the magic happens, as they say on MTV. You've got four slots on each page, and you've got four different pages, therefore giving you 16 source and destination slots. And it is way more than you need, really. Um, I've only ever used maybe five or six at the most. So this is basically where you choose your source and destination for your effects. So for example, you may want LFO1 to affect oscillator one pitch. I'm just gonna turn off the noise though, and the sub as well. And there, you can easily hear the pitch modulating there. And you can also put in a modifier if you like, for example, the mod wheel. And so it won't modulate until you start moving the mod wheel. So that was an overview of the synth page. Let's move on to the ARP page. This is a fantastic ARP. It's probably one of the best on the market and it is highly programmable. And this is a huge lesson in itself, which is included in this course. So you can turn on the ARP here and if you want to do it quickly, you could just choose presets for the patterns here. Or of course you can program in your own patterns. And in these controller lanes, you've got a whole load of ways to affect these sounds and patterns as well. And down here you've got gate and swing and all sorts of stuff like that. But like I say, this is a huge lesson in itself, so I'm just gonna skip over this in this lesson. And let's go to the third and final page, the effects page. You've got six high quality effects available to you and you can switch them on like this. You've got the resonator, which you can see here. And you can turn them on or off either by clicking here or by clicking the on off switch on the actual module. And each of these has their own list of presets as well. You may not know that. Just click the down arrow and you'll find a load of useful presets for each section. And it really is a good time saver. It really gets you in the right area before you start tweaking yourself. The phaser and mod effects have been put into the same unit. So just switch between the two here. Delay is self-explanatory and so is reverb. And you've got a nice EQ down at the bottom here. So let's just turn off some effects and just be left with reverb. 
mix control here. Right. And you've got a lot of control over the high frequencies and low frequencies of the reverb. You've got chorus effects with rate and chorus. You've got high cut, room size and pre-delay. And again, you've got a lot of control over the lows and highs with the percentage control here. And you can also rearrange these effects just by clicking and dragging. Just a quick tip and something that I use quite a lot, you can right click any control or fader and on the right click menu, you can just go to modulation wheel and enable mod wheel. So now the mod wheel on my MIDI keyboard is controlling the frequency dial. As you can see here. So obviously changing the frequency of that modulation with my mod wheel now. And you can have more than one control on the mod wheel. So for example, the cutoff can be on there. Let's put on the reverb mix as well. And you can also, by the way, set the maximum. So if you want the reverb to go no more than say 50%, so go to mod wheel and set maximum. And let's say you want the minimum to be, I don't know, 8%. Right click, modulation wheel and set minimum. Now when I use the mod wheel fully, it will only go to 50% maximum and 8% minimum. So now we've got cutoff. Actually, let's just put this envelope dial back to zero as it's affecting the cutoff quite a bit. So we've got cutoff, we've got frequency. And we've got reverb mix as well. All being controlled by my mod wheel on my MIDI keyboard. Not a fantastic example, but you get the idea. So just a couple more things then before we wrap up this brief overview. You've got a load of presets in here already. So just click on the down arrow. And actually these presets here with the prefix BTP1 is from a brand new preset bank that I've made, especially to go along with this new Retrolog tutorial. So the preset bank and the new tutorial will be released together, just so you know. And there will be a special deal on that, of course. So you can check that out if you want. And there's a load of presets that come with Retrolog as well, which are quite good. And of course you can save your own presets. So I do highly encourage you to come in here and learn this beast and make your own sounds. And then just click the floppy disk icon to save your own presets. So just a couple of practical tips before I go. You can of course use your mouse to change the dials, you know, click and drag up or down. But if you want finer control, which is very useful, believe me, hold down shift whilst you're clicking and dragging. For example, when you are doing the oscillator pitch down here, you only want a very, very tiny amount, like 0.2, something like that. Otherwise it's just too much. So therefore you need your shift button held down for that. And as usual in Cubase, your control or command click is usually to reset the dial or parameter back to zero. And in some places you can actually type in the numerical values, which is a lot easier sometimes. Oh, just one final thing that I've just remembered. Not only can you assign the mod wheel to certain dials and knobs, you can assign any knob on your MIDI keyboard, any sort of rotary knob, just by right clicking and clicking learn CC. Okay guys, I really hope that's been a useful overview to all you real newbies out there. Join me on the rest of the lessons when we get into much more detail and start creating some really epic leads, pads, bases, etc. Okay guys, thanks for watching and see you later.